This series of videos, so far, has discussed databases from an interactive application development point of view. We have looked at an example of a web store where it is traditionally thought of as a transaction processing system. Also, at the start of the series, we talked about the features that make Neo4j a reliable generic use database, but we didn't explicitly talk about the unique analytics opportunities presented by the graph data model. In fact, graph analytics are a rapidly expanding use case and one of the fastest growing market segments for Neo4j. In this video, I'll try to show you how it is possible for graph databases to excel at both OLTP and OLAP applications and how Neo4j is built to be the perfect full-spectrum database. Let's start by looking at the example of product recommendations from our sample web app. Since Neo4j can efficiently execute complicated pathfinding queries, even on large databases, we can stop thinking of recommendations as offline batch jobs that are pre-computed once per day and provide recommendations in real time. Even though the exact same query may have to explore a widely different number of paths, depending on what the currently is in the database, Neo4j is built to make that transparent to you. So at any point, you may be running in real time a query that in other databases may be a costly analytics job. There are also use cases where you want to know something that is even more computationally intensive. The suite of algorithms that comes with the graph data science product from Neo4j are a prime example of this. GDS is a widely used product for large-scale graph analytics and is usually deployed on dedicated machines with lots of computing power. So it can quickly go through large databases as part of larger data science or machine learning pipelines. But even though other hardware may be required, GDS runs on top of your existing Neo4j installation. It is the same database, the one you're running in production. Neo4j lets you blur the line between the traditional OLTP and OLAP silos even further. There are workloads that are possible with graph databases that do not neatly fall in either category, like visualization. Neo4j Bloom allows you to render parts of your Neo4j database on your screen for visual exploration. You can understand the structure of your data, look at the shape of the result of specific queries, and more. Bloom operates through a natural query language interface that is transformed behind the scenes to Cypher and retrieves results from the Neo4j server just like any web application would. The results can vary from a few simple paths to spanning a large portion of your database. Couple that with the usual transformations you can apply on the results, like aggregations and projections, and the workload that Bloom applies to the database to perform its visualization can be arbitrarily complex and border on what can be considered an analytics or reporting workload. However, we don't need a separate data store or data model to support this case. A very wide range of workloads can be supported by a single Neo4j database precisely because the graph data model represents a structure that is usable by all. The larger point here is that Neo4j treats every query equally, without assumptions about where on the spectrum of OLTP to OLAP it may lie. As it executes it and understands more about its runtime behavior, it makes decisions about access paths, resource allocation, and other optimizations to operate as quickly as possible. Neo4j implements the graph data model in a way that makes it possible for both developers and data scientists to focus on what matters without worrying about transforming data to an appropriate form or shuffling storage backends depending on the workload. In this series, we have covered a wide range of topics and introduced a few concepts that are fundamental to graph databases and Neo4j. Join me in the next video, where we'll offer a quick recap and then a glimpse into the future of graphs. <laughs>